Well, I uh, have to say, I also am a member of the uh, City of Espanola Planning and Zoning Department. We had a scheduled meeting for tonight, but I have to tell you, uh, public safety is a core priority for me, and it was so important for me to be here tonight. Um, they uh, had a quorum tonight uh, for planning and zoning. I wish John uh, would have made it, because it would have been nice to hear what he has to say as well. But of course, good evening, and uh, thank you for holding this forum, Ron. Uh, thank you for inviting me and, and our team. Uh, I am J.R. Trujillo, and I'm running for District 1 uh, City Council. I am an active person in our community. I have been in business here for the past 43 years. I started here when I was 13 years of age, working for Hacienda Home Centers uh, years ago. I have served on several boards and commissions with my focus on creating wealth, jobs, and economic development for Northern New Mexico. I'm a current member of both the County of Rio Riva and the City of Espanola Planning and Zoning Commissions. And I think that gives me an end in creating some relationships between the two uh, governments. And I'm also a former Espanola City Councilor serving from 2002 to 2006. You know, when I moved back to Espanola in 1996 to open my hardware store, it was called the Quick Fix Ace Hardware. In fact, many of you used to shop at that store. You know, I had a mission, and it's one that I still share, and one that I still have. And in fact, every day when I wake up, I look myself in the mirror, and I ask myself a very important question. I did it this morning. JR, what are you gonna do today better than you did yesterday? That is a, a mission I have, and I do it for one reason, to be the best person I can and participate in the world that I live in at the highest possible level. You know, there are several people on the stage tonight, and I'm very proud to say that uh, they're my friends. We live in a small community, we know each other, we talk to each other, I eat at their restaurants, see them at ball games, whatnot. But you know, they are my friends, but we have differences, and I hope you will consider those differences when selecting the next city as Espanola Mayor and Council. You know, Robert Seaton for Mayor, Anthony Van der Boston for District 4 Council, Denise Benavides for District 3, of course she's running unopposed, John B. Hill, John Ramon B. Hill for District 2, and then of course myself, JR, for District 1. But we've assembled this very diversified team with a common goal, and that is to move Espanola forward. You can hear that a lot from us tonight. We uh, want to capitalize on the hard work that our city councilors like Michelle has done, Adrian has done, and we want to make sure we take that and we move Espanola forward. But you know, there's an old saying, and basically uh, actions speak louder than words. And I'm really proud to say that as a city councilor, we were there when we took that fire department. Sorry, JR, your time's up. I just got 10 second notice. Or 10. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. But you can, you can finish. Let me wrap it up. You bet. So basically what I was going to say is that I've been on city council, I've sat in that seat, and I've had to make tough decisions, okay? When the fire department was starting out, we, uh, we, we helped bring the fire department from five employees to 15 employees. We were the ones that purchased the equipment, provided the training, got you set up to be able to protect uh, our, our great city. We had a qualified paid fire chief, okay? And let me tell you something, we need to get back to those days where we have a paid fire chief. But we, uh, we walk the walk, and uh, we talk the talk. We, we bring to the table a lot of things that we're proud of, and one of them is action. So I hope you support our team, because we are a team of doers. We'll always find a way, we'll always get the job done. Thank you very much. Good evening, folks. My name is John Ramon Miguel. I'm a candidate for SNL City Council District 2. That's the west side of Chico, San Juan, and Piedra. Uh, I'm a native of the district. I was born and raised on the west side. I grew up, they brought me home from the hospital, and I grew up on Oñata Street right there on the north of my grandparents' mortuary. Uh, I love this city. I was that since uh, little boy I was instilled with public service and giving back to this community. And since the age of 14, I've been involved in multiple boards and commissions for our city. At uh, age 14, I was appointed to the Espanola City Library Board as the youngest city board member in Espanola history. <coughs> I've served on the Espanola Fiesta Council since 2010. As the Ground Zone Parade Coordinator, I've worked with a lot of firefighters, with inspections, emergency personnel, incident command, and our streets department 
to make sure we have a safe fiesta. Fiesta is the largest event in Espinal, as we all know. Um, but really, what I can bring to the table has been my experience in the last couple months. Uh, I was appointed by the governor to the Board of Regents at New Mexico Highlands University, where I sit on the Budget and Finance Committee, uh, as well as I chair the Student Affairs Committee. It's really important there at Highlands, um, we have a $59.6 million budget, uh, and we have to constantly toggle with the Higher Education Department and such, and we're all, always looking for revenue sources. CMS Pool has a $10 million budget, roughly. And I believe that I can bring to the table fiscal management experience, hard work knowing in my work in the community, my passion for culture, my knowledge for history here in Espanola, um, and my compassion in working with people and knowing the beauty of this city. And I know its potential. I know it has a great future. It's had a wonderful past. I think we've had some stagnant growth right now in the present. And I think we can move forward to see a better Espanola, and I want to go back to that title that JR said. I need mean, to move Espanola forward. We need to stop. We can reevaluate what our priorities are for the future, and we need to make a vision for our city where our citizens are proud of. Youth that are leaving my age, for instance, they're taking to going to college, they're not coming back home. It's kind of unfortunate. We need opportunities for them, economic opportunities, things that we can be proud of. My name is Tony Valdez. <coughs> I'm a professional city council district. I'm a professional boxer. I work in Los Alamos as a truck driver. As everybody knows, when I fight in the ring, I was given 100%. You know, nowadays, now when I'm about to hang up my gloves, I want to fight for you guys. I want to give it 100% and fight for you guys. Be the voice of the people. You know, it's really sad that when we go to places, you, you guys all know this. And, I know I'm sure it's a problem for you guys as well. We go to a park, you know, we have to do a walkthrough because of the fact that there's demons everywhere. So I want to be the person that push to get cleaner parks, more activities for our youth. That's our future. This this community has nothing to offer our youth. There's nothing here. You know, it's really sad to see our youth. They're moving districts, they're leaving, and people are leaving moving town because there's nothing in this community to offer our youth. I really want to be that person, be that voice to push, to get more activities, to get more jobs, to do more, to do more drug programs. We need something to help out this community, to help not just sit here and if we can complain about the problems or talk about it, I want to do something about it. Thanks. Well, my name is Denise Benavidez, and as you all know, I'm running the District 3 and I'm not on the post, so you're stuck with me now. <laughs> important to have and it's commendable that you guys thought to do so. Um, I currently work in Santa Fe for a nonprofit. It's called the Housing Trust, Santa Fe Housing Trust. <coughs> uh, I'll give you a little bit of background prior to that. I was a banker for over 35 years. I worked in every aspect of banking, uh, finance, budgeting, operations, compliance, audit, everything you can think of I did. I wasn't afraid to take on any challenge and I'll do the same for the city. I was also born and raised in this city. I have a passion for it. I was proudly raised on the west side, as John mentioned as well. Um, many times uh, when I was younger, we had opportunities to travel. And uh, back then, we used to tell ourselves, why do we live here? But as I grew older, I realized why I live here. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. I love this city. I have so much respect for this city. And I think that that's something that needs to be marketed. I think that the team has been able to move the city forward with the team. I think that uh, one of the things that I'll bring to the table is those management and leadership skills that I think we need. Um, I think the fire department as well as the PT are very important to the city. Um, the other thing that I think I can bring to the table in addition to those management and leadership, the financial background that I hold, is just in being able to take on tasks and handle those tasks. There's a few people that I saw earlier that can work for me who know that I stop at nothing until that job is done. I'm diligent, I'm detailed, and again, I stop at nothing until that job is done. So uh, if there's a way, I'll find it and I'll <coughs> thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Anthony Vanderbilt. I'm currently running for city council. Uh, 
uh, District 4, which is a particular security area. 51 years old, lived in SPL my entire life. I grew up on the west side. I've uh, been married to my wife for 29 years come on. <laughs> Meg is 26, Brian is 24, uh, he's 24 in February. I've run a business here in Espanol for 29 years. See, it's ups and downs. Uh, served on the McCree School Board for two terms. WABC baseball for uh, 12 years. Coach uh, varsity softball for the for five years. Coach varsity baseball for the for three. Um, I love kids. That is our future. That Tony says we only need to keep those kids, bring them up right, uh, give them a the, uh, the talent that they've got, because I'm proud of this town. I currently uh, chair the New Mexico Trucking Association's Tony Recovery Board. I've been there since 2013. This last year, we uh, lobbied the legislature to change the slowdown in local law in New Mexico. We're the last state of the union to have slow down the water a lot now affect the tournament period. We've got a lot of change. Uh, subsequently, I helped plan and participate uh, we call it the Spirit Ride. It was a nationwide ongoing public awareness campaign that focuses on roadside safety for all first responders. Uh, in July this past year, I was chosen to speak alongside the Lieutenant Governor of the State of New Mexico the New Mexico cabinet, the OT secretary, the, uh, the chief of the New Mexico State Police, the DPD chief. Uh, it was a uh, gathering to promote roadside safety, SPL fire, and uh, this kind of PD were both represented there. So I thank you guys for making that. Uh, I am an instructor for Tim. Tim is traffic incident management and is the division <coughs> of the US DOT Federal Highway Administration. I have firstly trained over 300 responders in northern New Mexico, most of those firefighters. Uh, emergency management, the emergency management director and myself, uh, Ray River County and myself, uh, we started a, 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 a training program or a, a scenario program called a, an MCI program. We currently have three MCIs uh, today from northern New Mexico. Uh, served on the city of Espinosa City Council, director of finance, recreation, and I was a member of public safety. During our four years on the city council, which is the chair of the deal, we had a staffing level from the small fire from 5 to 15, purchased a brush truck, fire apparatus, administration, administrative vehicle. Uh, the cornerstone of our platform and we moved Espinosa forward to make Espinosa City a place. Good evening, and muy buenas tardes, les adios. As most of you know, my name is Justin Salazar Torres. On behalf of my beautiful wife, my two daughters, my family, um, all the citizens of District 4, I uh, would like to thank you for having us here today. Thank you. I am a lifelong resident of the beautiful Española Valley. Uh, I have served in the beautiful Española Valley and northern New Mexico for the last 12 years. Um, I started actually at John's uh, grandparents' place at Block Cells on Mortuary, and that's where I started serving. Uh, since then, I've, uh, I've been serving in different mortuaries, um, and I'm here. I'm here in the valley to stay and serve our people of the valley. Um, I want to thank uh, the firefighters because I know all that you've done does not go unnoticed. Uh, sometimes those that serve uh, have a tank inside within them, they can run on empty, and uh, I thank you for pursuing that. Uh, still, uh, I made a joke. <coughs> Y'all must love us to stay here and keep serving us, and, and we do appreciate it. I have personally seen you all in action uh, at all hours of the day. Your job is not an eight to five kind of job. I've seen you all when you're at a house call at three in the morning and you're having to speak with a grieving family. And going beyond your call of duty, again, it's appreciated. Together, we can inspire more, a more promising vision for future generations, rekindle the voice 
of our citizens and serve greatly the people of District 4 and the citizens of the city of the beautiful Espanola Town. Thank you. Uh, the department's newest truck is seven years old and their next truck is 19 years old. What planning and imp implementation will be done to assist in obtaining current equipment and training? Well, first of all, uh, I'm a family man and I've got a two month old that just turned two months today and I almost needed your services. Uh, she got uh, she caught a cold uh, a few uh, I'm going to say a few days ago. She was very congested. She stopped breathing. She actually turned purple on us. Um, no doubt in my mind. What's my wife? You know, she's a British dental hygienist. She knew what to do. I didn't. Probably the first time parents. You know, the scares right. Freaks me out. Um, I almost needed you and to think that some of your equipment is outdated and to think that I know I will call you and I know I will need you. I want your equipment and I want all that you use to be up to date. Uh, not to say that your vehicle will not properly maintain. Uh, however, you need proper equipment to get the job done right. Uh, it's just like your iPhones. You can have the old iPhone or you can have the brand new one. Um, but as long as you have the proper equipment to serve and do your job, that's what we're here for. Um, actually, the, I think that's the, the oldest fire truck in the city of Sonoma. We uh, got rescued two years ago, but that was on the uh, Equipment is one of those situations where you buy it once. It's not an ongoing situation, like an ongoing source of uh, Need for funding like uh, accelerators. That is something that you need a uh, grant for. Or, uh, one of the things I really admire about this campfire is you guys set us a really good example on working with neighbors. Because anytime, anytime anybody needs help, you guys talk to your mutual aid to San Juan, San Juan, Tio Inget, both both uh, counties. Uh, I think we need to pursue revenue funding the legislature and from other sources and going to get it as a joint group. The ladder truck's the only ladder truck. The next one is San Jose County or uh, Solomon's County. So even at the Rio Riva, that's the only one. It's got to use it quite a few times. Um, I'm going to with other people. It just spreads a little from there. They gain use of the truck also. Um, our own own uh, equipment that we use in our industry kind of makes here so I don't want to fire the cost of all the cost is kind of expensive. That truck and those are are a lot also your equipment doesn't get a lot of miles on it just because a lot of it's see it's not local one of the tribes outside the county. But where it is where you do need to be replaced your certifications. The older the equipment gets, the more expensive it is to certify it. Um, I think that the question says it best. I think that it starts with a plan. Uh, one of the things I do is policies and procedures. The other thing I do on my current job is manage and administer grants. Um, so there's that capability there, and the capability is huge. Grants for fire and um, equipment are, are out there. I think that the other thing that would need to happen is um, working together with the fire department and the council to come up with a plan. Funding is an issue, so there needs to be a plan put in place to, to figure out how to get that funding, who can work together for that funding. And I think that grant writing is a big possibility. And, and there's other possibilities as well. I do believe that there needs to be equipment that um, is usable, um, that is maybe newer. Um, I think that it's something that can be talked about at some point. And um, I do believe also that the job that you guys do is very important. I appreciate you guys very much. Um, I also had an event a couple of years ago with my mother. She passed away just this week. But I have you guys to thank for having her an additional two years because we were told that had you guys not responded
responded in the way that you guys did, she would not have made it. So I want to thank you guys for that. I told Ron I'd mention that tonight. But um, the hope is to be able to work together to see what the need is and how to fund that need. Because funding is currently an issue. I would like to sit here and tell you guys, yes, we're going to get you a fire truck. We're going to keep the experience. But honestly, getting a new fire truck, it's, it's going to be hard. But a 19-year-old fire truck is a safety concern. But with the maintaining of the, maintaining and the upkeeping, upkeeping of these fire trucks is what I would like to push forward in keeping somebody accountable for the upkeeping, upkeeping and maintaining these vehicles, to keeping them on the bar, making sure, making sure they're in a safe, accountable manner because of the fact that not only is it going to be dangerous for our firefighters, but dangerous for the public as well. If you guys aren't having, if you guys don't have the vehicles that aren't operating or aren't working correctly, how can you, you you're, you're in danger of yourselves as well. You know, it's a major safety concern when we have a lighter truck over 20 years old. Uh, currently on the city's capital outlay request list, they have a request for a new ladder truck. The um, problem with those capital outlay lists is there's no continuity in our city government. And, you know, a new administration comes in, they change, they scrap that with CIP list that they submit to the LFC. Uh, there's no accountability. So uh, if I come into the council, if I'm elected, God willing, uh, I will be able to hopefully push that we maintain and keep this on the CIP list and rest. Uh, another issue I have is uh, we need to foster an MOU with Santa Clara Pueblo. Uh, right now we're in the tallest point here in the whole valley. I think everyone looks at this tallest building. Um, this is Santa Clara, so I believe Santa Clara should be giving in their portion. They should have a partnership with the city of Española to be able to supplement this building. Uh, Century Bank is actually on the Pueblo land as well. It's another tall building here in town. Um, we should be working with them. I also understand that you know, Los Alamos County, a lot of their funding comes from the DOE, so when they release their equipment, uh, priority goes to federal <coughs> entities, and since uh, Pueblos are affiliated with the EIA, they have first choice on this. So I think that goes back to continuing with our government, our CIP list, as well as fostering a partnership with Santa Clara, trying to fire them. I believe in a lot of our solutions to our money problems uh, definitely come from developing a very robust global economy. Um, I think it was said earlier, um, we are in dire need of growing our local businesses. We are in dire need of bringing new businesses. And of course, you know what we get to spend as a city, right? It's the gross receipts taxes that our businesses collect. Um, I think John hit a, a very good point. We need to create relationships with our government agencies next to us, like the Pueblos, like the county. We need to have MOUs with Los Alamos. We, have to have, we need to have MOUs with Santa Fe County. Um, we have a very unique city. We have a lot of uh, neighbors close by that need to pitch in for these types of expenses and these types of problems that we face. Um, John mentioned a new truck on, on the uh, list of, of potential projects that we want to, to purchase. And, that's a five hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollar item, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, per grand. That's a lot of money. Where does a small community come up with that kind of money? So again, I believe in developing a strong local economy, get our local businesses humming, they'll collect uh, gross receipts taxes, and that'll help us pay for a lot of the things we need for our fire department and for other departments in the city. Thank you. Currently the uh, city of Espanola does not provide funds for the fire department. Money allocated for the fire department is solely based for paying taxes. How will this government body obtain an operating budget for the fire department to include the fire fund budget? And we'll start with that, Jeff. Well, thank you. Well, you know, I can uh, look back to when I was a counselor before, and we uh, were able to purchase equipment for the fire department. We were able to hire more employees, uh, five to 15 firefighters. When we supported the firefighters in joining the union, when we had a paid fire chief. You know, uh, I know you've heard the old sayings that are around the valley. You know, one of them is, uh, hey, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? You also heard the saying that sometimes you have to go to more than one ojito to fill your bucket with water. And the city has to get back to that. You know, one of the things uh, we've done, I've done, Anthony, Robert, we've been out there to find a way to find this money. It's tough. Money situations are not easy to cure. 
there are always someone else that has a priority, right? We have a panhandling issue, we have drugs issue, we have a police a lack of police enforcement issue, uh, we have streets that are falling apart, subdivisions that need new roads. There are a lot of choices to make when you sit as a city councilor and as mayor. But I'll tell you what, you know, we need to find a way. We need to go through and create these relationships with the governance. We need to get a buy-in. We just found out tonight, we have a funding source right here in this room with uh, the Alameda from PRC. You heard our mayor candidate ask and mention he would look and seek out grant writers to help us find this money. You know, one of the things that always confuses me and kind of upsets me is we are always first on the list for the bad, the highest crime rate, the highest dropout rate, the highest heroin addiction. Why aren't we on the first list for getting money for these programs when the money is available? So we need to seek that out. And that's one of the things that I uh, promise to do as a city councilor, to work with our team to bring the money home, find solutions to our problems. The majority of the city's fire department funding comes from the state fire fund, which is administered through the fire marshal's office. <coughs> the city only contributes the salary and benefits for our law officers. Uh, but there's a lot of concern because auxiliary items such as cable, uh, quick, small little equipment, things for the bunkhouse, those kind of things, they can't be paid through the fire fund. So it kind of makes it really difficult, you know. The city needs to look at new revenue sources coming <coughs> in, uh, grants. You know, they just purchased that truck, that, uh, that truck is the two-door, they used a grant, they went through federal government to administer that. Uh, the city needs to look at increasing its GRT before we can help anyone. You know, I can sit here all day and tell, tell you I want to give you more money, but at the end of the day, i got to see what's in the pot in the pot, and I can't go and split that around. What we need to do is we need to prioritize what's what we need to do. And public safety is a, high, is a high priority here in the Espino Valley. We need to, what I would have to do in follows up when it is to appoint somebody to find, to go, we talk about getting grants, and we talk about things to appoint somebody to find these funds. Appoint somebody that way, somebody's ongoing with finding these funds of what we can do to, to help out with public safety. TR and John touched on all the important issues that, that I would have touched on. I agree with everything that they say. Uh, the other piece that I would add is that it's really important to work with the fire department's management because management plays a huge role in participating in that grant funding and writing. Um, I also think that fire chief is a key because that person would also be a person that we would work together with to assist in finding those revenues that are needed for that operational budget. But gross receipt, like John said, is a big thing as well. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things I see is you guys, as the fire department, does a great job with what you have. I mean, you guys go above and beyond. Uh, I see you guys pull money out of your own pockets to fix something out of trucks and to take it out of service. You don't have anybody at the top. You don't know how the fire chief to fight for that. When it's time, uh, budget time in the city, the uh, head of the Department of Public Safety goes and fights for your, uh, for your budget. The disciplines are totally different. Law enforcement and fire. But another thing that I feel uh, people have touched on, it all goes together. Una mano, la otra y la dos se daban caras. Uh, it's raising, it's getting GRTs moving. It's uh, moving us up to stage two uh, water restriction there, which is uh, affecting our ISO. We've gone from a three to a five. It's uh, putting a, a comprehensive plan tied in together with good, good developments and getting the development that makes sense in the city of Espanol. We have city streets, Calle uh, Loma is one of them there. Well, you can't put a fire truck up and it's not back up all the way down. Uh, at night, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, a tense situation, that's not a good situation. So, it all has to be looked at. And I believe I have a really diverse team that is able to take on a task and move forward. I, I say it's very simple. Uh, better money management from the city. You find a way. <laughs> on the flip side, if you use it, if you use it, you should invest in it. You're using it. 
Uh, that goes for everybody, Pueblos and our city. Use it, got to pay for it. Thank you. Well, you already know your stuff, right? So, so, I just want you guys to know, like I said before, and Dan, you know, I'm dedicated. I'm a really hard worker. People have said I have attitude, and they're correct. It's a good one, though. My students, I'm picky. I'll tell you some right now. But again, uh, it's what I do. I didn't make you picky. Um, I think with my background, uh, we talk about budget. I think that um, I can help with that quite a bit. I think that my operational background is another plus for the city. Um, I have a passion, like Tony does, for children. I currently work with the Pueblos already. My company, uh, we're currently working with OKOB on uh, financial literacy. We're working on a student debt program currently. Uh, we're in talks <coughs> with Santa Clara Pueblo. I'm working currently with IAIA on a standard bank. We're doing a lot with kids. Um, I currently work quite a bit with our veterans, and I'd like to continue doing that here. I'm working with them in Mexico currently to put together a program for our veterans. Um, I also work with the seniors quite a bit, and it's a passion, and it's something that um, I would like to continue to do in our city. I sat on many boards and committees, which I did mention earlier, uh, together with JR. Uh, we sat on a board that was just awesome with Los Alamos National, and I also sat on one of Los Alamos um, I sat on the chamber board for many, many years. Now I take all day. Um, but that being said, there's so much potential here, and I think that one of the keys is communication, the other one is teamwork. I think that by having a team that is willing to get in there, roll up their sleeves, get their hands dirty, and to figure out what the issues are, prioritizing them, putting together policies, and abiding by them is what we need to do. I think that that's a strength for me, and I think that you guys will see that going forward. And again, you know, I just want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity, and I'll do the best job for the city that I possibly can. You know, my name is Tony Montez. I live in Gangley. I'm a professional fighter. I have a boxing gym. I work with kids. I work with troubled kids. I go to the elementaries and I get troubled kids from the elementary. I take them to my gym, and I collaborate with the counselors to see how their behaviors improve. I do this all for free because I love to work with kids. I love to see a kid change his life. I'm not political. I don't have no political ties. I'm in this state alone because I want change. As, I, as a, you all well do as well. You know, I don't have no political ties. I don't have a family that's political. I'm coming in this because I want change. I would like to see change not only for my kids, for you guys but for the youth, our future. That's our future. You know, I, I really don't want to keep stepping back and stepping in the same puddle even though it's there. If you guys want change, everybody talks about change. Well, I'm Tony about this, and I'm running for District 2, and I want to be your voice. Let me fight for you. I fought for 19 years, well over 19 years in the ring. I'm really hanging on my gloves now. I want to fight for you guys. I want to be your voice. Thank you. My energy and my passion lies with this city. Last 10 years, you've seen me roll up my sleeves <coughs> the domestic council. You'll see me at 11 o'clock at night picking up trash to all the night. You'll see me rolling dumpsters. You'll see me at 7 a.m. getting ready for the grand parade. You'll see me down here for electric light parade, <coughs> making sure and coordinating traffic and such. My heart's vested in this city. Get on the city council if I'm elected. You'll see me at the legislature working hard for Espanola, going out there. I have to take one of those little hands and say, let's do a handout. I want to help us. You know, I'll be rolling up my sleeves. I'll be doing that. My grandma and my grandparents were politicians. They have a funeral home here in Espanol and they comforted people. They took care of people and they cared for people. My grandparents hated politics, but they still in me the love of helping people and caring for them. And that's what I was raised to do. And my grandma also used to say, if something's broken, you fix it. I see our city really needs change. It needs help. We need to address a lot of issues here in our city. We have a lot of problems. We're not looking them in the face. We're not addressing them. We're not doing anything about them. Even in the so it's time to move forward. It's time to get us to know out of the world that it's in. It's going to take it to a better future because it had a great past. And I know it can have even a greater future. Thank you. Thank you. So as your city council for District 1, 
I promise to keep changing, to always do all I can do. To always find a way to solve problems and to get things done. You know, we have a history as a team of doing things this city needs done. We're not talkers, we're the walkers. We roll up our sleeves. John's there at 11 o'clock at night. We're at committee meetings all hours of the day and night. We're up early, we have our own businesses. We're used to being successful at what we do. And we want to share that success with the city of Espanola. Um, I have to tell you, you know, uh, there's no way anybody in this room cannot stand and give these firefighters a standing ovation. Maybe we can do that at the end of the meeting. But you guys, thank you very much. It's tough to be a firefighter. I've heard stories from some of the other uh, people tonight that have experienced your, your just courage and your ability to save people's lives. I've been in that position. I thank you for what you've done for me. And I hope that when you see me, you smile, because when I see you, I always smile. And again, if you guys can vote, please come support us on March 6th. We need your vote. If you can't vote, then tell your friends about us. We really need support. We really need to get things done in this valley. And we need to move Espanol forward. Thank you very much. In closing, uh, I want to thank the Espanol firefighters for allowing uh, us to come out and uh, pitch for votes. Um, I can't go away with this. I believe one of the, great, the, the greatest tool a firefighter has is the one between his ears. I'm a big guy in training. Um, I don't. I believe you cannot train enough for a job that can kill you. Um, now, you guys <coughs> form a relationship with people on your ship and people in the department. We've also formed a relationship with our we're really diverse, and each one of us has a very unique skill set that will lead us in not only helping the fire department, but helping the whole city. One of the things that's really kind of more uh, in the last 20 years, fire call typically was an entrapment uh, or a fire. It's really changed to where there's a lot of different calls out there right now. Uh, that's something we kind of need to look at. I actually have a lead on a a building source to to actually put funding in the city's pocket for those kinds of calls. Kind of Presently, the city of Espinosa is mutually aid to Riverdale County, Santa Fe County, Oak <coughs> Weber. The hazmat team for Rio Riva County is Espinosa Fire. Plain and simple, you guys cover more than what we know you guys cover. We need to really work with these other uh, governments to pursue some kind of funding sources. You can't fund your salaries out of it there, but equipment purchases are, are, are a really key, uh, key thing we need to go I have the experience and the diligence to continue to grow an outstanding department that the Eskimo Fire has. For 31 years, I've worked alongside the 20 year guys. Uh, I've worked with members, uh, worked together professionally, and get to the state. Tonight is about you. That's what it's about. Uh, the fire department. The reason, the reasons of why I'm running are sitting in this very room. Uh, my family. Period. I want my daughters, my wife, and my family uh, to always be protected and always be safe and always have the resources and always have updated equipment, whatever it may be, to make sure that my family is taken care of. Uh, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I needed you, you'd be there and you would do well. The reason why I'm asking to serve is to serve those that are serving. Uh, as I mentioned, tonight's about you. And just last night, I was lecturing my 14-year-old. Wives don't get recognized very much. My wife is always supporting my daughter and always there for softball, etc., as well as myself. But she's also here supporting me. She always tends to be on the back burner, and she serves us. Well, in essence, that's the same for you. You all keep giving, you all keep serving. And because you take care of us, I want you to know I will make sure you're taken care of. God be with you all, and always keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you guys all for coming. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And this is something new for us. 
Uh, and thank you, really, really thank you for being here. Um, but I know the passion that these guys have, that I have, and you know what? If we can make it happen, nothing bad will happen on our watch. Thank you guys. Thank you.